Welcome back. I'm Ted Rudin. Today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, it feels like the first day of spring and we've got a 2007 Aston Martin DB9 Volante. It's 65 degrees. We're getting a snowstorm in two days and we're going to take advantage of it with this V12 Monster. I absolutely love the DB9 and over the years it has grown on me significantly. This is not a car that just speaks to you in the numbers, although it does have some good numbers. It's a V12, 5.9 liters to be exact, making 450 horsepower in its pre-facelift days. That's not a lot, but it's enough, and it definitely gets the job done in style. This one's finished in Antrim blue, and inside we've got this Bentley saddle tan leather, which I believe was a fairly pricey option at the time. And man, oh man, this aged well. I think in a time when we're really anti-touch screen, we don't want iPads all over our cars, these depreciated Astons are starting to look better and better and provide a driving experience that we're actually looking for in a proper driver's car. Now, you're not going to go out setting Nürburgring lap times in your GB9 Volante, but I will tell you, even with the six-speed ZF automatic gearbox, it is a joy to drive. We've got the optional 19 inch diamond cut wheels. We've got a 235 section tire in the front, a 275 section in the rear to hold all that torque. And this beautiful tan leather is complemented by the mahogany veneer wood trim. Now on camera, sometimes this might look a little crazy, but they really do allow the wood to do some speaking because it's got all kinds of ridges and things and there's color variation and it changes in the light and it's beautiful. So. Let's take a look at this power plant. Familiar if you've been on the channel before, we're not a stranger to a DB9. And there she is, another hand built in England by Mick Freeman, inspection by Mick Freeman. Not my first Mick Freeman, certainly not my last, but it's always fun when you can see familiar names on the cars that you're driving. Now you'll notice it's labeled as a 6.0 V12. That's fine. We accept that Mercedes says 6.3 despite their 6.2 displacement. We can accept this as a 6 liter despite it actually being 5.9. It is a 2 plus 2, but you wouldn't be able to sit back here if you were ambulatory. Legs are not an option unless you are a child. So this is more of a deck for stuff. But let's jump in and take it for a ride because this is such a fun thing to enjoy. We've got our fun skeleton looking key jump into the column ignition here. Here our fuel pump going and our push to start in the center. A little bit of a rasp. Sounds fantastic. A sound that does not get old for me. I'm always happy to drive a DB9. As long as these clouds don't unlock any rain, we're going to go top down. I'm going to use the earmuffs, not because I'm cold, but because I have microphones in each ears. And this is going to kill all the wind noise. So transmission buttons up on the center dash, as we still have in Aston Martin land. Pop it and drive. I've got my e-brake off. We're ready to go. We're in sport mode. Let's see how she gets off to 60. yourself just wanting to keep the revs up for the sound and under load wow what a thing it's awesome the car though although sporty it doesn't beat you up it's actually fairly soft and easy to drive the steering while tactile and light you've got all the feedback of a great hydraulic steering rack tells you everything about what's going on with those front tires and the front tires aren't particularly wide so with the 235 section 
tire, you're able to actually glean quite a bit of information through your fingertips. interesting is that you can feel the flex in this chassis it, it's clearly not as rigid as the Cooper it doesn't feel as rigid as the Coupe and I think part of that is because sometimes I've driven modified DB9s this one doesn't have a sway bar but what you can do is you put a DBS sway bar in the thing and it really wakes it up and makes that tail end a little more happy but I don't feel disappointed with a little bit of chassis flex because I think it's actually suits the car you can feel this old sort of roadster vibe which is enjoyable if you're looking to feel a rewarding experience in your drive i mean you can always make something better or more agile if you want to modify it but i just find that the information that i get from the seat of my pants in this thing is so delicious you get a lot of looks in the db9 it's classy it's not like driving around in a red Ferrari where people look at you like angry, like you're a monster. People look at you like, what is going on? This is sophisticated. I think you could show up pretty much anywhere. You could pick your kids up from school in this and not like look like a total wiener, but you could also show up to a lovely banquet or a golf course and look appropriately dressed. We've got paddle shifters. They are column mounted, not wheel mounted. They've got a little bit of leather and aluminum going on. So the touch points, of course, it's beautiful in an Aston Martin. The steering wheel, it must be said, it's very simple. You've got some cruise control settings. You've got your phone and audio controls. Nothing fancy. It's just a car. This is designed to be driven. love the sound of this thing. Take it nice and easy by the cyclist. We don't want any trouble. The shifts, all right. It's a little bit of a dated gearbox. We gotta forgive it, it's 2007. Uh, but it suits the vibe and the character of the car just fine. It's not something that you're expecting. Dual clutch, rapid fire shots. And at the same time, Aston Martin had a single clutch gearbox at the same time that was very clunky. They were using Advantage and that was a rough one. That's a little harder to forgive. This auto really does the trick nicely. It provides a smooth, engaging experience without the jolt and delay of that single clutch. This is the correct choice. is quite long though so you're not going to be playing with these paddles very much if at all if i had to define the brakes i think the word luxury comes to mind there's a long pedal throw to get into the brakes in any meaningful way so don't expect that you're gonna come down from speed with a gentle grace of those pads. You're gonna really need to stab into there and they are fully functional and they work fine, but 
sometimes it does feel like you've got to put in some effort. It's definitely designed for a limo stop, not for uh, track work. first bit of throttle travel can be a bit aggressive. You just got to be gentle on it. And it's a fairly light throttle. You don't have to put much effort into that pedal. But what I love about cruising around in a special British Roadster is enjoying the sights and sounds and scenery. And I'm bringing a lot of it with me, which is cool, because I can go find some beautiful roads like this, and that's fun to look at. But at the same time, I'm not doing it in a Miata. No offense, Miata guys. I've brought my own V12 orchestra to the party. Good, respectful motoring. You know, sometimes you get in a new supercar or something a little outrageous and you feel like you need to just hammer the thing and, and feel it on the knife's edge in every single corner. This does not ask for that. In fact, this is just pure driving pleasure. I know some folks are gonna watch this video and think, man, I wish he went faster. I wish he really showcased what it could do that's not what it's asking for. It really is at home in this sort of mid-range, barking that beautiful exhaust. She looks like she belongs in an Aston Martin. I certainly do not. I'm glad I got these paddle shifters just so I can hold it in gear. I like listening to this engine. It makes me very happy. GT Cruiser, this is this is good. I think a lot of GT cars, modern GT cars, newer GT cars, they get a little stiff. This is compliant. This is cushy and beautiful to drive on the highway. But at the same time, I don't have some vague steering system to mimic the, the sense of luxury. It's just a good steering system that's properly damped.
be classy, but definitely not above revving it out under a bridge for the Echo. That's good stuff. Given the option between Coupe and Volante, I think I've got to go Volante because, I mean, I think this is a phenomenal summer cruiser. This is a great thing that you can enjoy most days. It doesn't require a special occasion, although you might use it on a special occasion. Oh yes, British motoring at its finest. Doesn't wave, doesn't care. He's got his dog, he doesn't need me. So guys, thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts for tossing the keys to another variant of the DB9. You know I'm always good for a V12 therapy drive. Don't you forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Spring is right around the corner, although there is snow coming, and uh, I got a feeling, got a feeling we're going to do some M3 snow drifting one last time before the season's out. I've got to say, there's something about the way this handles and the way it's so direct and sporty in comparison to something like a Bentley, right? You go and, I mean, I know they're not really in the same price range, or they used to be. A Bentley Azure does not do what this car does. That is a yacht. This is like a moderate, moderate-sized speedboat. It'll do the job.